Welcome to a brand new episode of Keep Swing. I'm your host, Matt Stucco. Today, we have not just one guest, but three guests. They're the creators of Super Coffee, but they're also brothers, so they know a lot about loyalty, accountability, working together as a team. So today, I introduce to you guys Jordan, Jimmy, and Jake DeSico. Guys, thank you so much for joining us here today. Let's go, Matt. Thanks for having us, brother. It's game time. Glad to be here, brother. Thank you. Yes, sir. So if you guys are familiar or unfamiliar with the three brothers, they created a product out of straight passion and it's just been absolutely excelling. Personally, what I love about you guys most is you guys just are absolute grinders. I mean, when it comes to dropping off products, setting up shop in the most random of towns or in cities, it's awesome to see. It amps me up whenever I see you guys post something on Instagram. And I just hope that whoever's listening to this, by the end of this, they're also inspired. So Jordan, Let's start with you. Back in 2015, I mean, it all started in your dorm, right? Yes, sir. That's right. I was a student athlete. I played basketball. We would have 5 a.m. workouts, and I'd sluggishly walk over to business school afterward. And unfortunately, the only thing I could get was a $5 latte from Starbucks Cafe with 100 grams of sugar or one of their bottled drinks, which were just as bad. And I loved coffee, and I didn't do energy drinks. So I was like, there has to be something healthy that exists out there. And unfortunately... Uh, there wasn't. Uh, so the first thing we said, or, or I said with my with my teammates at the time was, I'm going to create a coffee that is great for you, tastes great, and gives you energy all day. And I went to my dorm room blender and literally started making organic coffee mixed with protein, MCT oil, and then zero sugar. And that was the initial kind of MVP product. Uh, and I used all my teammates as guinea pigs to, uh, to get started. <laughs> and there's something that I want to point out too that you didn't touch on, but you dropped out of school at one point at Philadelphia University. You're there on a basketball scholarship. You eventually went back to school, but that was such an incredible leap of faith. And being the younger brother of the three of you guys, the two people sitting right next to you, I'm sure they had a lot to do with your confidence. Totally. Yeah. I mean, it was my freshman year when we started working on the first initial concept. So I had four years ahead of me. But by the end of that freshman year, I, w- I just fell in love with it, right? You mentioned passion and it really felt like this was this was a great opportunity, but something I truly loved more so than basketball, which was my life up to that point. I was on full scholarship and I moved in with Jake that summer at Georgetown. Uh, they had an amazing summer launch pro- program where we kind of learned the ins and outs of product market fit and how to get off the ground. And at the end of that summer, I was like, shit, man, like if I go back to school and you're going to the senior uh, season of football, there's no way that this company you know, works. Uh, so I decided to give up my full scholarship stay down there with Jake. And then that's when I was able to convince Jim to, to join us as well. And that's when we had the, uh, that's really when the company got started. So you're crashing on Jake's couch down in Georgetown where he played wide receiver down there. What this show is about is just about persistence and, and, and success through consistency. And a common theme with a lot of the guests that we do have on the show is their ability to work through adversity. And for every no, it just makes them that much stronger. So fast forward to 2018, you guys go on Shark Tank and I'm going to blow the the end right here just a little bit. You guys did not get a deal, but that could have been one of the best things to ever happen to you guys. Absolutely, man. And you said it yourself, like as athletes, if you lose a game, you got to show up to practice the next day and get ready for the next opponent. You know, so for us, we were disappointed. Not only did we not get a deal, we didn't even get an offer from any of the Sharks, you know, so that was our Super Bowl. We went on there expecting to, to really make or break and, 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 and align ourselves with one of the Sharks and didn't get an offer. So we were devastated. You know, we felt like that was a loss on national television. We actually filmed on Saturday morning. So uh, our, my college football coach had a 24 hour rule where uh, you got to celebrate a win or mourn a loss for, for 24 hours. So on Sunday we were bummed out, but on Monday morning we got right back to it. You know, we, we poured the samples, we improved the flavor, we improved the packaging uh, and, and we bounced back. You know, we took that feedback and, and to your point, I mean, we, we used it as fuel to motivate us. Now, Jim, there is a quote that you said during the show or at the very end, which I'm going to read it because I don't want to mess this up. But uh, it was one of the favorite things of, of, of mine that you have said. And you said, at the end of the day, I'm doing this with my two little brothers. It's love, it's trust, it's hustle, it's competition, and no coach, no shark, no boss can tell us otherwise because we know what we set out to do and we're going to do it. Dude, when I read that, when I saw that, even just now saying it, I get the chills. I mean... You guys have the ultimate mindset. You guys just have that winning mentality, and, and that's what attracts so many people to you guys. Yeah, I, I would say 
it's not even a winning mentality, you know, like, like that, that's almost table stakes, you know, for, for being competitive. But, and you talk about us being resilient, the resilience was just more that failure was never an option, you know, like, and, and when I say that, it's not like we were, we were uh, fueled by like this fear of failure. It just wasn't even a thing. Like we didn't think that we were going to fail ever. And we were just going to chip away every day to get to the destination. And I think that is where sports fueled us. Cause you, just like Jim's point, you lose a game, you go to practice the next day. And that's just how we ran the business from day one. And it was like, we're just going to keep moving a little bit closer, hopefully not run out of money. That was the only thing that was going to stop us if we ran out of money. Um, but failure was never really an option. Dude, perfect segue. You mentioned money. Can you tell us where you guys are at right now, considering that you guys said just start in 2015, again, no deal in 2018 with Shark Tank, but just your guys' ability to continue to crush it in this space? Yeah, Jim's the money guy, uh, but from a, from a sales side, uh, we're America's fastest growing food and beverage company. Um, that was Inc. 5000 puts out their fastest growing companies. And as an organization, we're about 90 full-time folks. We're, we're the number four coffee product in the U.S. behind Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts, and Java Monster. And we know kind of the path that we're on. We just did a big deal with Anheuser-Busch uh, to be our national exclusive distributor. So, I mean, where we're going is, is what we're most excited about, but we have made a lot of progress over the last four years as well. You guys need to get some Bud Light seltzers, bring them to that couch that you uh, sat on at Georgetown and just crush them and think about the good days and how this all started. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. It's been awesome to see that you've been able to get guys such as two-time NBA All-Star Baron Davis to invest with you guys, Aaron Rodgers and his team, most recently Alex Rodriguez. I think your athletic background and in a, in a, in a way of relatability to these individuals is a great sell that you guys have used towards your advantage because not everybody that starts a company has that pedigree of sports in them. So when an athlete comes to you guys, they kind of know exactly what your DNA is. They can read your energy, which again, everybody loves. And I'm sure everybody listening to this is getting a glimpse into it. But that's got to be so cool for you guys when that does happen, I'm sure. And you guys, and correct me if I'm wrong, are extremely character driven. And I want to know when it does come to landing these deals with these athletes, would you say that at any point you guys are emotionally driven due to the fact that say like a guy like Alex Rodriguez was one of your favorite players growing up? Yeah, I, I think that plays a part of it. Right. But, but at, certainly at this point, um, uh, we got to do what's best for the business, you know, and, and that doesn't mean you got to control your emotions. You know, like when, when we first met Alex, it was super exciting and, and, he was cool to talk baseball and behind the scenes stories with us and contract negotiations and all that. So that was awesome. But at the end of the day, we, we had to get a deal that was good for the business. It was good for Alex and Jennifer. I think the, the relatability to athletes certainly works in, in getting guys like that on board, you know, cause we can connect on that level, but it goes the other way too. You know, it, it, being an athlete can sometimes be polarizing to people who don't play sports, you know? So we got to, we got to sort of moderate that intensity sometimes, kind of like know, know your audience, but it's definitely helped us attract some, some world-class talent. And I'll just say too, like one thing with any partnership, uh, whether it be a business partner or an influencer, the, the big thing for us is the values and the vision have to align. And any single influencer, it's so important. It's not just the name. It's not just the celebrity status. Do they match your company's values? Is it true to who you are and what you want to accomplish? And are you aligned on your vision? Uh, I think any partnership, thrives on thrives on that yeah well, one thing i was gonna add on just to george point there is you mentioned some big names like baron is someone who, who we love baron davis and, and alex rodriguez um and aaron Rodgers, and, and and us having a natural affinity with athletes but that started very early on working there's a guy named kyle harrison uh, one of the best lacrosse players of all time and he was local to the baltimore washington area where we were starting the business and that connection just came through Kyle being competitive and seeing that we were competitive and Jim was able to put those pieces together. But it was like, hey, here's an opportunity to get in with an influencer who influences his circle. Um, and then we were able to kind of grow within the world of, of lacrosse, which is something that none of us knew. But I think just to your point about like connecting with competitive people, like minded folks. And now it's funny to what Jordan's point is that grew from Kyle Harrison, a local lacrosse star 
to, to Jennifer Lopez, uh, which is crazy, but it just like the things that you do over time, you can scale those. And it was the same mentality of just working with good people who believed in us and we believed in them. I love that you said that going down that path of an area that you were unsure of, like not knowing, like lacrosse. And there's been other things that you guys been able to add to your skill set that I've watched myself, whether it's Instagram Live, your YouTube channel, having all these interviews with all of your investors and just other people who have had influence on you guys. But you guys have now been able to add a skill of doing this, which definitely helps you guys when it does come to sharing your own story. Totally, dude. It, it's so funny because we, we weren't always this way, you know, and, and that's, the, that's the amazing thing about uh, the, like the human ability, right? Like you can go out and create the person that you want to become. And, and five years ago, when we first got started, you should have seen me pitching investors. You know, I was stammering and tripping over my words. I was all nervous as all hell, palms sweaty, you know, like couldn't talk, totally awkward. Uh, and as you get more comfortable doing these things, it, it's like you got to get comfortable being uncomfortable. You know, we weren't good public speakers. So I think just repetition and repetition. And, and one note to, to every entrepreneur out there, or every, everybody who's pitching their passion, you are the, the, the world's foremost expert on your own business. You know, and, and once we understood that heading into Shark Tank, sure, it was intimidating talking to Mark Cuban and, and, and all the sharks out there. Uh, but they didn't know more about super coffee than we did, you know, so we, uh, you got to have confidence in that. And I think that confidence is, is it, it's contagious, you know, it created momentum for us. And the ability to adapt as well. I mean, you guys have slowly adjusted over time without compromising your mission. Just that alone has been able to lead you to where you are right now. Yeah, totally. And that's one thing on Shark Tank that they didn't take into consideration was they didn't like the product. Uh, but by the time the episode aired, we had a completely different, reformulated, improved product on the market, which probably one of the only brands in Shark Tank history to ever do that, have a new product on the market before the episode even aired. Uh, so that was something that we were proud about, but it's something that we pride ourselves on today is just evolve or die. And you see a lot of brands out there who might be doing the same thing over and over again, running into the same problems or losing market share, where for us, we kind of embrace that change, not only as individuals and, you know, leaders, but also our product portfolio. And that's something that will continue to evolve um, and embrace coming forward. Yeah. One thing that these guys just touched on too, uh, and it was, it was from your question about you've gotten good at, at this. Two of our, our, our childhood heroes were one, Derek Jeter, and two, Kobe Bryant. And Kobe Bryant's Mamba mentality, I think, is something that people think about all the time. It's like a killer's mentality. It's offense always. One of Kobe's core, core principles was become a great storyteller or be a great storyteller. And I think that's something that the three of us learned that like, if that's a superpower for your business, whether it's talking to the team internally, talking to investors, going on uh, media platforms, it's something that we learned that like, hey, you, you got to become a great storyteller. And, and it's uh, the easiest way to get people to buy into culture and believe in what you're doing. Um, and it's something that, that we, the three of us try to work on is just telling our story and getting people to, to buy in and become as passionate about this as we are. That's awesome. So I guess whether it was Kobe Bryant growing up and watching him and just learning from him, or even within your own household, your dad played sports in college, your mom was an All-American college athlete. It's evident through you three how much of a positive effect they've had on you guys. Yeah, I mean, definitely, definitely through sports, you know, mom and dad were athletes. That's really all they knew growing up. And, and I mean, one of the, the mentalities that we embrace is work hard and be nice to people. Uh, and that works on the field and off the field. Um, you touched on it earlier about resilience, sort of doing things that other people don't want to do. Uh, but as that translates to business, like, I mean, forget about what we learned in school. What we learned on the field got us ready for, for business more than anything we could have ever been taught in the classroom. And then it, it just generally from taking these lessons from our parents, working hard and being nice to people, like bringing that compassion to life. We say you can't have one without the other, right? If you work work hard and you're an asshole, we don't want to work with you. Uh, and if you're only nice to people, but don't put in the work, you're, you're not very useful to us either. Um, and then with the, the family piece that you just touched on, people some, sometimes advise like, oh, don't get into business with friends or family. I think we think, I mean, we think the opposite, you know, like we have, we have trust built in 25 years of trust amongst the three of us here. So uh, we have a really unique business aspect or business partnership given the family vibe. Yeah. And I think mindset also is everything too for us and we always thought and i still believe we we had an unfair advantage growing up not because we were raised with with money or anything our parents didn't have any money but 
to know that they loved us, they cared for us, they were always there for us. We didn't have to worry about where our next meal was coming from. And they pushed us um, in the classroom, on the field, on the court, whatever it was. And then we had each other. Um, that gave us that unfair advantage. So it's, again, a lot of people think, you know, if you don't have uh, somebody in business in your family or somebody who can make the connection or fund your first venture, the chances of you succeeding are a lot lower. Uh, you know, I don't think so. I think if you have a great, great family and, and that foundation behind you, that's all you need. You can go out and you have equal opportunity to compete with, with people who might have easier access to funding. So we worked hard, I think, through those principles of just working hard and being nice. That's all we really needed to, to have a leg up on, on the competition. Yeah, and mindset sets you apart to Jordan's point there. And going back to mom and dad too, like mom and dad raised us with so much optimism. That was, I think, really what sports had taught them. I vividly remember Jim was a sophomore. He wasn't even the starting quarterback going into our sophomore year on JV football. And I was a freshman. We were like B-plus students. And mom was telling us, like, hey, we're going to look at colleges, like, for you guys to play football at, like, what do you think about Stanford, Duke, or UNC? And it's like, we're not qualified for any of those. But, like, that's just where her mentality was at. Like, you'll develop and become, like, that will be at your fingertips. Like, the world is your oyster type mentality. And we should have been looking, thinking about D3 options at that point. That optimism that, that they raised us on is definitely one of our core pillars and core values at Super Bowl. Yeah, I think simply put there, like we believe great expectations create great capabilities. And if you believe in yourself, you're going to go out and find a way to make it happen. Yeah, let's go, baby. I want to start something today. Shoot. <laughs> but but uh, one thing that your mom said that I just absolutely loved when she would drop you off at school and whatever, she'd say, go kick today's ass. You guys take that mentality every single day. And that is clear through your guys' grind of going to all these uh, cities and states that I'd mentioned at the very head of this interview and just doing what a lot of other people don't want to do. And if I'm on your team, I'm looking at that saying, if my leaders are doing this, I want to be that great as well. And as you guys are sharing the story right now, you guys kind of remind me of the Gronkowski brothers, Rob Gronkowski and his brothers, uh, a big athletic family, all entrepreneurs, all successful. I think that says a lot about you guys and your family and your character and why you have been able to be so successful. So with that, I want to ask, when it does come to holidays and working with family, what is it like when you guys are not working? Yeah, man, I, I think for us, it, one, we're, we're best friends as before we're business partners, you know, so any, you can find us anywhere. It could be in the, at, at a picnic, at the beach, whatever, throwing the football, playing one-on-one, -on -one. you know, like we still, we still have that built in. But I, I do think that from when it comes to a work life balance, we don't we don't separate the two and not in an unhealthy way, but like our work is our life. You know, it's family, it's it's we believe in what we're doing in terms of making a positive impact on other people. So even when we're on vacation, we're talking about opportunities and dreams and visions for for the brand and where we can go and the, the impact we can make. So, it, it, and it's cool, like mom and dad are, are, are bought in, you know, they, they, they support the hell out of us and, and they're really our biggest fans. So they're asking questions about it. And sometimes like you, you want to just unplug, like Jordan will come home with a, a new product idea at 10 o'clock on a Tuesday night. And I'm like, dude, I, I gotta, I gotta unplug, right? Let me, let me, let me throw the Yankees on or let me, let me go to bed, you know? So we, we have, we're comfortable. Uh, we're comfortable, sort of putting putting the foot down and, and creating that separation if we have to. Dude, that was amazing. Like I said earlier, if you want to get into TV, if you want to get into radio broadcast, whatever, you guys got the skills. <laughs> <laughs> guys, I want everybody to be able to stay in touch with you, get inspired and, and motivated. And again, I hope that they feel this way after this. How can everybody stay in touch with you? Say hello and and just follow along in your journey. Yeah, man. I, I think the best way is on Instagram. Uh, the, the company handle is just at Drink Super Coffee. You can find all three of us from there: Jimmy, Jake, and Jordan Seco. Uh, we're on. We're pretty active on LinkedIn too. So connect with us and, and hit us up with questions. We love. Uh, we love connecting over coffee. Yeah, if you really want to get in touch with us about Super Coffee, you can go to our email: brothers with an S at ketulife.com. K i t u l i f e dot com. That's an email that uh, we can get back to you on as well. Again, I'm, I'm just so thankful for your guys' time and, and really just love your story. I'm stoked that you're able to share it with us. So we really appreciate your time. And yeah, go kick today's ass, boys. Let's go. Keep playing. Hey, brother, let's go. Stuff. Thanks, man. This was awesome. Hey, everybody. 
everybody, thank you so much for watching that episode of Keep Swing. Man, we have so many more awesome guests on the way, and I don't want you to miss any of it. So please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also, feel free to go back and watch past episodes. And again, if you subscribe to the channel, that is the best way to find out who we are going to have on the show next. And if there's a guest that you want on the show, I will do all that I can to have him or her come on. So please leave a comment. Let me know who you want to see on Keep Swing coming up. And also, too, feel free to leave a comment what you thought about the episode in the comment section below. Give it a like. And if you head over to Instagram, I'll be posting clips from all these interviews. Just a little daily inspiration. And there you can interact with me as well. Until then, have an awesome day and keep swinging.